beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed Satan knows that men cannot endure hardship indefinitely. So he manipulates the economy and waits for you on that mountain. He knows that when the pain becomes too much and your church cannot build, the pastor will say, I thank God for this. But I prophesy, Sam, bring one million. Remember, that's not how he started. But because of the pain, we need money. Generator needs to be fueled fast. And now I'm at a point we brought a man of God abroad and we cannot pay him. So Sam, bring one million. Bring two million. So I see the church's financing rising, but I look at the soul of the members. So I know that an exchange has happened. The pastor negotiated an exchange. I, I, I'm not saying this in a critical way. The greatest dread of Satan is that you prosper while your soul prospers what then is his gain think how annoying it will be for me as a businessman this is what i'm selling look up please and then i see you hold both money and my product are you getting what i'm saying now now you think what that would do to me my advantage has been ruined you have shown me i don't need you that's the statement that this is happening and so when you can have a prosperous soul and you are empowered economically are we together you get up in the morning and say my children we are waiting upon the lord today yet the increment in the school fees does not affect the prayer because the resources are there glory be to god satan says what then is my entry point in this family thank you is god speaking to someone what shall it profit a man please listen to this message because i promise you every one of us you will climb that mountain i got listen 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 you may climb that mountain and come back with wood or you can climb that mountain and come back as a soulless person. That on that mountain, Satan will give you mundane things. And after 30 years of wealth and affluence and increase, you will find out that you are on your way to hell. This message is a deliverance to the body of Christ. Listen to me. I can tell you that Satan hates what you are hearing. I call it the warfare dimension of kingdom wealth where the product is your soul versus the world hmm. your soul did you ever hear that they sell souls hey, Jimmy is a businessman where do you say I know they sell pure water is that true I know they sell clothes 
but he's saying there is a marketplace on earth where the commodity of exchange is the soul of man not slave trade was only a mimicking of something that was already in the realm of the spirit if it's not in your presence if it's not by your hands if it's not by your spirit don't let me have it everything i need is in you hallelujah revelations 18 read for me from verse 9 we are reading 9 to 13. Babylon, as a woman, that Jezebel that sits upon the horse, the Bible tells us she's not only a prophetess, she's a businesswoman. Babylon, the kings of the earth who committed fornication and lived deliciously with her, shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Verse 10 standing afar off for fear of her torment saying alas alas that great city babylon is falling for in one hour is your judgment come 11 and the merchants who are those who will cry the businessmen of the earth how did they become rich the bible says the the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore their prosperity was tied to their, their connection with her whatever happened to babylon happened to their business are you following me please hmm. what are her merchandise look at these are the products that this woman deals in are you ready believers number one gold and silver and precious stones and pearls fine linen purple silk scarlet tyan wood all manner of ivory all manner of vessels of most precious wood brass iron marble 13 mm. cinnamon odors ointment frankincense wine babylon also sells anointing oil did you see it there and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses help me now read together and chariots and slaves and souls of men babylon any one of these products you want she can give you give me the souls of men so that my track when i produce anything it will get everywhere and she says the condition bow to me that exchange happens on that mountain while it's happening you don't know the next thing you just sit down and find out that your soul is glued to their music the, you, you, there's nothing you can do you just find out that you bite you are even minding yourself the next thing you are nodding your head and, ah god forgive me you don't even know what is happening the souls of men What kind of a businesswoman is this that does both physical and spiritual business sells gold sells anointing for you you want anointing for ministry she can give you too <sighs> but you always know that it is her product by one single litmus test as the wealth grows your soul dies your wealth and your soul cannot grow together when you do business with her i wish above all things koinonia tell me you are getting blessed tonight so when your soul is going down and then there is increase coming could it be that an exchange has happened on that mountain what shall it profit a man if he gains gains loses gain loses business terminologies you can gain the whole world and then you lose your soul
Is God speaking to us? There is an assault of darkness, listen, over the body of Christ. And let me tell you this. Many people in this country do not know how to prosper God's way. And that includes men of God. Listen to me. I have a responsibility to teach you the truth. Many people do not know how to prosper God's way. And right now that the systems that provide for things like corruption and the rest, the civilization of the world is making men more vocal now. The things they could not say before, they can now say. That means if the truth is not taught, the church alongside the territory is in trouble. There are many men today who became rich by stealing and investing. They don't know anything. They cannot mentor you to be wealthy. They only stole money from some political scoffers and then had that money and had a business partner who helped them to invest the money and now they are rich. You may call them businessmen. You may call them millionaires and billionaires. But they have negotiated something. They cannot raise another generation. So right now there is confusion. People love God but they are hungry. Hunger is moving like the angel of death. Are we together now? One by one is meeting families. Some of you as you are seated right here. If I told you, stand up, let me give you a prophecy that tomorrow will change your financial life. You will be surprised that without your will, you will find yourself standing up. That's to tell you how hard this thing is becoming. Are we together? There are students probably sitting here now that it will take the grace of God. I cannot tell you literally without exaggeration. Hundreds of text messages by people apostle help our family our rent our this apostle we just finished three days dry you see it there that thing is supposed to be a mockery to the name of the lord we just finished three days dry and god could not solve our hunger problem and then the people continue to contemplate what kind of god is this oh and satan says that's exactly what i want because let me tell you when come sam when sam continues to say help me help me and i say i cannot help him one day he will stop calling me he stops calling me because someone else has held his hand and says let's go to the mountain you can't keep begging forever let me show you give me your soul and i will give you tea and bread he will try it one year and it will not work he will say okay go i will come back he will wait till the hunger increases and say i'm still here a day will come that hunger will hit you and like Esau, you will say, please, what is a portage? What, what do you think happened to Esau? Do you not know that Satan waited until Esau was hungry? Satan always comes to men when they are hungry. He waits until you are hungry. Then he comes with his suggestion. It's a business strategy. Any businessman would tell you that people don't negotiate at a point of convenience. You wait until there is a need. Then you say, okay, here I am again. I told you to sell me the land. You say it was 400,000. Okay, it's because you have food. When the economy hits you, then I bring 250 cash. And then you say, Kai, my wife, what did you say? That Just bring this thing. That's what Satan does. So as a young student who is being rewarded by your parents, you don't sow yet, you reap. And then you are laughing and say, all oh, this finance thing, I don't, I don't mind. And then the next thing, you see a lady and you want to marry her and Satan says, exactly, let the plan work. He will help facilitate your marriage, not because he likes your marriage. He knows that when you are married, a child will come and the reality will dawn on you. Now you marry as a prayer warrior and a war giant. And then your wife says, my husband, sorry. My parents are coming and we need a place to keep them. Am I God? Am I the only person on earth? See that? And before you know it, your life begins to be in shambles. One day you will find yourself browsing the internet. Mantras for wealth. Enter. You, you will never believe you would have done that zodiac sign the palm of my hand what does it mean let me know whether they cost me from bed and they say put your age 
And you say, I, I don't even, I'm not sure. They told me I'm 30, but the way I'm suffering is as if I'm 40. Let me try 40 and see. You see that? You are laughing, but you know you do it because it's the pain. How many prayer leaders, how many pastors, by the grace of God, send me text messages all the time saying, Apostle, I don't, I'm, I'm about to give up. People may not know. They just see me praying and preaching, but I'm tired. Let me tell you the truth. I say it before God, and I say it truthfully. This challenged me because I said it means there's something wrong. Let me tell you this. If you sit down and see your child dying, you will not know when you will do something you never believe you cannot do. You may not do it for yourself. Was it not two women that ate their children? What made them eat their children? Hunger. They ate one whole child. A mother that cannot forget her suckling child didn't cut herself. They would have cut one leg. At least the person is still alive. But they ate the baby alive. And the next day it was to eat the child. Look at the, from Genesis to Revelation. See what hunger did to men. Study what hunger did to men from Genesis to Revelation. Was it not because of hunger Israel went to Egypt? Who took them to Egypt? Not demons. God's covenant people went to Satan. They said, buy us. Money failed. Hunger can take men from Israel to Egypt. Are there not places that some of us are walking today that you sit down and say, but why should I be walking here? I know what happens in this corporation. I know that God is not glorified. I know they are serving the devil. I know that the products and services they are involved in, my, it violates my faith. But the day you talk to your husband or wife that I think I should live here, the day you say that thing again, it's with the back of my hand I will slap you. Did you see the last PTA letter of the child? And Satan says, that's it. And a time will come out of that pain and frustration, the young lady will call her ex-boyfriend and say, just to know if you are fine. He said, lie, hunger, taking men from Israel to Egypt. Are we together? This is what I saw coming to Nigeria. This is what I saw coming to Africa. I saw a time and not too distant time when hunger is driving people to do things you cannot believe because the many doors of corruption were just closed. This is what I saw in my vision. And because most men only corrupt, they steal and share. And then they steal and share. Then when you get your own, you quickly manage it well. But now that the door is closed, people are saying, what do we do? And I saw people going to this woman to say, I need members. If I don't get members, where will I get offering? And then where will I get tight to be able to survive as a church? So Babylon, let's negotiate. Bring members to get more overflows. My soul will be what will be in exchange. If you ever say this cannot happen, you are joking. Do you know the desperation? Do you know what men can do when they are desperate? Read your Bible and see what... They were willing to go back to Egypt when they were hungry. They left Egypt. I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed. When they were hungry, they said, we remember. We remember the garlic. We hunger will make you forget the promised land hunger will make you love your yesterday more than your tomorrow i remember when i had this boyfriend i wasn't going to heaven but i was in heaven on earth now that i gave my life to christ and left this guy look at how miserable my life is oh let us go back there is garlic there is cucumber is it not in your bible and onions at least we have food to eat Moses, we are hungry. Was it not on account of supply that Moses missed the promised land? Have you forgotten that they were thirsty and they needed water and they had been nagging at Moses? No leader can survive a hungry people. I don't mean spiritually hungry. They will nag at you and disturb you day and night. You know, 
There are people who come to my house. They just come and knock. They knock the gate and stand there. I just open the door and they say, I'm hungry. Sometimes they come as a group, group of children, and just knock and stand there. Do what you would do with us. We are hungry. That's what happened to Moses. And Moses was, God told him, speak to the rock. He was human. Your humanity plus hunger is not good. And he struck the rock. And God said, no, this is it. You are not going to the promised land. It was hunger that made them build an idol. They said, Moses, we are tired. We are not sure that is this your God you saw in the bush that brought us out. Please, Aaron, come. Put jewelries together. We will sacrifice our gold. Build us an idol so that we will dance and say you are the one who brought us out of Egypt. Was it not on account of hunger many parents now stop going to church? And they say, where was God when they sacked me from Railway Corporation 1999? Where was God when I was crying with my sick child on the bed, needing 150,000 to... I, I prayed and I called on pastors, they prayed and I watched my child breathe his last breath on something that could be solved. Don't talk to me about church again. You come to preach and they show you the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and tell you, look, before you were born, I was a prayer coordinator. Hunger made me leave the place of God to Egypt. You don't control people by controlling them. You control them by controlling the economy of their territory. The rich rule it over the poor and the borrower will always be slave to the lender. You will thank me for what I'm teaching you tomorrow. You will thank me. Because you are listening to this message for your children. You are not just listening for yourself. It will take a selfish and a wicked person to not listen to these truths. Then don't have children. Because woe betide any man. I say this respectfully to our parents and the elderly people here. But most of our parents made this mistake. And that is the the mistake that has produced a negative history for many of the young people seated here looking at me. It was hunger that created the episodes of pain that we do not even want to remember about our lives. Don't transfer that to your children. Hunger made people to marry those who are not the will of God. Hunger made people to be relocated to geographic territories that was not the will of God. Hunger made people to change their age. You will see somebody 50 years by instincts. You know this person is 50 years. He said, no, he's 27. He, he, you, you see that? How many footballers have their true age? I'm so, so you don't think I'm just talking. That's what hunger can do. How many people join occultic fraternities? The fact that they are growing in, I hope I'm right. I heard that early this year. They were stealing ladies' underwears or something like that. Now, listen, that is not a good news. It's to tell you that men are not ashamed to prosper. Did you hear what I said? Let a lady pile her clothes and say you should wash and you see if you are angry. But the native doctor said, go and carry, not, not the head tie, carry the underwear and bring it. And the man is not embarrassed. You can pick that underwear as a graduate, as a bubble, and bounce with it to a shrine because you are desperate for prosperity. Which one is easier, to believe God or to do that nonsense? What shall it profit a man? I don't want to get to a point where at the end of my life, I have acquired cars and houses, Koinonia has risen and I look at myself and I look at my soul and my soul is dead. Have you ever heard that anybody died and his money went with him? Koinonia, talk to me. Have you ever heard that anybody died and his real estate disappeared and followed him in the grave? No. Any prosperity that demands your soul to get is of the devil. Let me tell you many ways that this business because this business has franchise 
And one of the way the franchise works is by occupying you with activities that will not let you have time for God. Is that not your soul being sold? It doesn't have to be an occultic negotiation. By the time you have to forfeit a Sunday service where your word is about to come because if you don't, your boss will sack you. That's your soul going. You do that for one year, you find out you can't remember one memory verse again. You are praying and you will be quoting wise sayings instead of scriptures. Because you have not hidden any word in your heart again. What shall it profit a man? I want to show you one more mystery and then we'll pray. Is God speaking to you? Tonight's call is a serious wake-up call for the sake of our children and our children's children and for the sake of our soul. Why do you think the Antichrist will leave all other things and go to economy? When you talk about the mark of the beast, what did the Bible say the mark was meant for? For buying and selling. Not for going to school. Not for Bible study. The devil knows that where he will get people how did they get Nigerians to register BBN? Was it not by the threat of their accounts? Did, did any police carry cane to pursue any man? Register your BBN or your account to be frozen. And people just come and say, please, what? I did my BBN in the night. They opened the bank for me by 8.30. Because I couldn't come in the day. People will lay and harass me. 8.30 in the night, they opened the bank for me. I said apostle come and do your bvn as anointed as holy i still did bvn in the night when satan comes to you and finds out that your individualism is not your concern he will attack your spirituality when he attacks your spirituality by making you fall from that height Remember, that was the temptation. Fall from that height, God will protect you. And when you survive that, he knows where to wait for you. He says, keep praying. You will meet me at one junction that is the only road. Only road. He meets you at that junction. It's not a T-junction, it's a bend. And he waits there and says, now, let me negotiate. Your child's school fees. Let me negotiate. Give me your prayer life and I will give you real estate. Give me the health of your children. Have you not heard of people who have sold different parts of their body for money? Please talk to me. Is it a lie? Give me your fasting and your appetite for God and I will make sure I give you a job in Dubai. And you say, is that the condition? Satan will not come and say, give me your soul, like your soul, your heart. Uh -uh. Give me your commitment in the house of God. And I will increase your money by 50,000. And he said, commitment, go places. Satan, give me. And Satan is an honest businessman. You will get it. He will give you the 50,000. Then remove commission that will make everything remain 10,000. And say, if you want, I'm still here for business. And before you know it, from settling near Sodom, you will be in the middle of Sodom. What took you there? Why do you think the Bible says, whose God is their belly? The logical thing should be, whose God is their brain? But he said, whose God? Hunger can be a God. And it can make men do things they never plan to do. Are we together? I was sharing with the leaders a little bit about the cost for just transporting people every meeting day and every other time the school of ministry everything for one year is what some people use to build houses but that's what a part of the budget of a department and never has anybody come to say stand up all of you drop one one thousand by force if you don't drop no prophecy or no seeing apostle never will it be 
never if you ever hear it anywhere know you are dreaming wake up that i ever tell anybody here is my bucket drop two naira and then you see me to receive prayer may god take my life a day to doing that you won't say amen because you are kind i want to make heaven i will pray it now don't get me wrong there are people who are experts who provide value and are paid and blessed for it that's not what i'm saying when people dispense value that is packaged they should be rewarded so don't confuse that with what i'm saying i'm saying to say bring money as the basis for prayer no sir thy money perish with you that's what he told by jesus are we together but if i don't have food to eat all this mouth that i've carried my big mouth to make i would twist that statement by the time hunger is serious if your mother calls you and your mother says my son or my daughter is this how you are going to leave me remember the womb that boy you will carry basket and stand there and say what is come and drop your money jerry I'm, I'm preaching i'm doing everything for you free most people who do what they do are not bad they just do not know the systems that bail men out say in the name of jesus, name of jesus. my soul and my pocket will both be healthy what shall it profit a man if you are going into ministry please listen to me with all your heart because if you believe your your ministry you know men of god have funny ways they believe ministry will be financed they just believe one day one arbitrary kingdom financier will just evolve from somewhere and just say you keep preaching while i keep giving you money <laughs> My brothers and my sisters, God gives us wisdom to save us from trouble. The Bible says wisdom is a defense. Is that true? There are sermons you will never be able to preach when you become a beggar. Are we together? Yes. May you never get to a point, man of God, where your members become the Holy Spirit. Where somebody comes and says, here's a check of 10 million. I notice that people don't respect elders and that becomes your message. The title of my message as revealed by the Holy Ghost is respect. No, it came from an angry rich man. Go up the mountain and bring wood and build my house and I will take pleasure in it. Are we together now? Let me show you something. Thank you, Sam. Ezra chapter 3. King of my life, you are my all, and I live for you alone. You're the king of my life, you have my all, and I lay my life for you. My heart is yours, my mind is yours, my will is yours, you're the king of my life. Now let me show you a very deep mystery. That mountain. Ezra will read one to three and then you'll jump to seven. And when the seventh month was come and the children of Israel were in the cities, the people gathered themselves together as one man in Jerusalem. Reading to three and then we'll jump to seven. Then stood up Joshua, the son of Josadak, and his brethren, the, the priest, and Zerubbabel, the son of Shetel, and his brethren, and builded the altar of God, of the God of Israel and to offer bond offerings thereon and it is written in the as it is written in the law of moses the man of god three and they set the altar upon his basis and fear was upon them because the people of the, because of the people of those countries and they offered bond offerings thereon unto the lord and bond offerings morning and evening go to seven now i want you to listen carefully look up 
and they gave money also to the masons and to the carpenters and meat and drink and oil unto them of Zidon and to them of Tyre. Take note. I want to show you something powerful. To bring what? Cedar trees from Lebanon. Go up the mountain. Bring wood. Build me a house. Now it says they gave them money to go and bring cedar trees according to the grant that they had had of Cyrus, the king of Persia. But notice, they did business with certain people. Now, not exchanging their soul, but the Bible says unto them of Zidon and unto them of Tyre. Follow me. Isaiah 23. You will notice the Bible very strangely talks of a city called Tyre and Sidon. Have you read your Bible? The Bible talks a lot about these cities. I will show you that these cities represented the center of commerce and economy in the earth. Isaiah 23, the first three verses. The burden of where? Tyre. Now look up please, we are walking the word. Haul ye the ships of Tarshish, for it is laid waste so that there is no house, no entering in from the land of Shittim, it is revealed to them. We are reading to three. Two, be still ye inhabitants of the isle, thou whom the merchants of Zidon that pass over the sea have replenished. Verse three. I wish we could read it in amplified or any other version he said and by the great waters the seed of Sihon, the harvest of the river is her revenue and she tire is the merchant the word mat there is the merchant of the nations there's no other version you can find oh dear okay it says was tires revenue can you see there he said and she tire became the merchandise that is the city the center of economy of the nations are we together what was satan called in isaiah 28 who is the king of tyre talk to me who is the king of tyre the very king of that mountain satan himself the governor, the protector of that mountain. Tyre and Sidon. The economic center of the earth. Satan allows other demons and other spirits to occupy other mountains. But he takes the mountain of economy and becomes the king of Tyre. I will wait there. Whoever comes will meet me there. He will not meet a demon he will not meet an archangel. He will not meet anyone. He will meet Satan himself. Listen, I can tell you where Satan is. He's not in your village. No. I know where he is. He's at the center of where the exchange happens for the house of God to be built. I know where Satan is. Satan is where your resources should come from. To make sure your family stays in peace that's where he is i know where satan is satan is at the point where your business needs to grow so that it will cause you to negotiate satan is obsessed about economy my brothers and my sisters please listen to me listen to me listen to me listen to me if you do not sustain an ability i'm going to round up tonight by teaching you the system the warfare dimension upon that mountain because although satan is there god still says climb the mountain climb the mountain was he not on the mountain both elijah and the prophet met but elijah returned back victorious was he not on the mount of transfiguration jesus climbed and he returned back and together with the three guys many things happened in the mountain and one of it is the victory of the saints economically the silver is mine. The gold is mine. 
I, 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 I pray from the depth of my heart that you will understand what I've said and see the value of it in your life. It will surprise you, my brothers and my sisters, when men are leaving God, selling their souls to the devil, and you stand together with your wife and your children, and you say, Lord, I give you the glory. In fact, let's go to Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, just go back to King, to, uh, king James so that we'll hurry up. We're praying. Is God blessing someone? Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of what? Talk to me, please. An image of gold, whose height is 90 feet. And he set it up in a plain called Dura, in the province of Babylon. Read on. The Bible says, and Nebuchadnezzar, now look at this. Nebuchadnezzar first set up a 90 feet statue of pure gold. Then look at all the people he gathered. Look at the quality of men that he gathered to come and bow down to that thing. Are you ready? He sent a letter to gather what? The princes. Read on. And the governors and the captains and the judges, judiciary and the treasurers and the counselors and the sheriffs, local government chairmen, and the rulers of provinces to come to the dedication. If you were not influential, you were not invited. Satan wants to dedicate his image in the land and handpick certain people to say you are invited. Listen. It was on account of that that certain gentlemen... Let me show you yourself now. Verse 3. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When we read verse 3, let's go to verse 6. Very instructive statement. Then the princes, the governors, the captains, judges, treasurers, counselors, sheriffs, rulers were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before... Please go back to verse 3. Let's finish first. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Verse 6 now. Read it for me. This is exactly why I am preaching all that I've been preaching. Read if you're a Christian. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth shall the same hour be cast into the midst. Why is economists use the term financial meltdown? Not financial cool cool off or ice ice uh, what do we call it now financial meltdown is that true if god grants grace i will teach you something powerful because you know the holy spirit just ministers something you know when jesus crossed to the other side the pigs were on a mountain that and they possessed the pigs were roaming around the mountain Pigs in the Bible stand for unclean animals. They were on the mountain and there was a spirit in a madman. As soon as Jesus came, watch this. Immediately the, the madman met Jesus. When he casted out the demons, the demons said, don't take us out of here. And they entered the pigs and everything went down. Who were those who attacked Jesus? The merchants. They said, you are doing something to our economy. By delivering one person something happened to their economy they said get out of this land quickly it was not the politician it was those who were in the economy that felt the heat when you read in the bible there was a time they flogged paul in the market square they dragged him to a market square not a police station and flogged him in the market square my brothers and my sisters there are mysteries in our world if it is economy you want to conquer, the little knowledge and the certificate you are holding will not go very far. If you listen to what I'm telling you, you will rise as if you are holding a charm. If you sit down there, this thing will squeeze you in a way. Whosoever will not fall down and bow and worship that image, the same hour, what is the punishment? Be cast into a financial recession. 
if you will not bow to God, then the devil does something to your finances. Seven, Jesus. <laughs> Mighty God. Let's go to verse 8. Wherefore, at that certain time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. Nine. And they spake to the king Nebuchadnezzar. Listen carefully now. O king, live forever. Ten. O king, has, has made a decree. Thou, O king, has made a decree that this and that and that and that happens. Eleven. And all of that, whosoever does not fall will do this. Verse 12. There are certain Jews. This is where we come in now. Listen carefully. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs. So they were men of influence. There are certain attacks that never come to you until you are influential. So the fact that it has not come does not mean it's just that you have not made any mark for the kingdom enough to warrant that attack. It's not a sign that your faith is working. There are many people, that because the devil just left you to do your thing, you believe that it's because of your intelligence. It's just that you are not making any mark whatsoever in the realm of the spirit. And so you are not disturbed. But the day God blesses you small, and they say you are now promoted to become a manager, that's the day you have a dream you never had. You just had that your father said he had the dream once and you recorded it. On that day, a stranger comes and said, let me introduce myself to you. I appeared to your father 35 years ago. Look at his life. And I appeared to your mother 36 years ago. Now you have qualified for my appearance. By your promotion, you have gone too far. Let's talk. And you wake up, ah, blood of Jesus, I just bind you. And then the next thing, you go to the office the next day. And they say, sorry, some people stole money and they found some money on your desk. Go down. And the man says, I told you, bow to me or rise. But if you learn what I'm showing you now, you can stand and say, Satan, this is my money. This is my gold. But I cast my crown before the highest royalty. Satan, it's not that I'm too proud to bow. It won't be to you. My refusal to bow is not arrogance. It's that it can't be to you. I cannot serve God and mammon. No, sir. Let it not be that I'm trying to run a parallel government with God. My refusal to bow is not pride. But this is what I'm saying, that there is one who is worthy of my praise. Sir King Salama Sir King Al Janna. Listen, I come from a family where these forces don't stop you to rise. Just go ahead and rise. There is a level, you know how a rubber ring is. Listen carefully. You can pull it. You get to a point where it will swing you back in one day. So people rise up, oh, educated. My father started working at age 26. But when you get to a point, something happens. You know how the swine just fell down and crashed into the sea. That's how your whole life, finances, everything crashes down. What were they looking for? Bow to me and I will give you the keys. But they were certain koinonia members. Shadrach, Meshach, Joshua Selman. He said, this man, O king, Kabaros Kebrahas Katalakata, have not regarded thee. Listen, they serve not thy gods nor worship the golden image. 
There are certain men who are prospering strangely in Zaria. And we have researched well and we found out that they don't serve idols. They love God with all their heart and yet they are rising. Oh king, give an answer. Because I thought you said for anybody to rise, their soul must go. But we have found certain people, their soul prospers as their finances prosper. The more they help their parents, they are rising. The more they, they are blessed prosperously, they use that money and they are still fasting and praying even as millionaires. Oh king, give an answer. And the king said, you mean it? Bring the boys. Next verse. Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury. Stop. It will never tire me to share with you my vision. I don't share too many of my experiences. Remember I told you, I know what this means. It was in this area that I was praying and fasting and crying before God. And all of a sudden my ceiling disappeared. And then here comes a strange being like a dinosaur and looks at me the eyes is as one eye is as big as the head of a man two eyes fiery red eyes and the tail was a snake it had its own life although it was attached to that being and the being was looking at me and i was looking at it my god i didn't bargain for this what is all this now what is this I'm a preacher that is just teaching truth and wants to help people and make meaning out of my life. And this spirit looks at me. That was when I knew that in the realm of the spirit, there is a soul thermometer. They measure the rising of men. Listen, I tell you this, my brothers and my sisters, believe it. When you are rising, there is a system. I will show you shortly. By the time you rise to any significant level, Beyond certain threshold, there will be an invitation of certain guests. And they will say, gentlemen, we have watched you. We started watching your grandfather since he was a reverend. We watch your grandmother as a prayer warrior. Nobody rose beyond this level. What is these tongues you always pray every night? And these koinonia messages you are always listening to? Uh, they are doing something that is threatening our continuity in your family. When that spirit appeared, I looked at it. It was looking at me. And this is what it said. So you think you can bring God's people into abundance. That was the conversation. Wow. What devil is this? It was from that day, I knew that men can be gatekeepers. They can. You don't knock when you have a key. You only knock so that you somebody who has the key will open but when you have a key the bible says you should knock because you don't have the key but when you have the key knocking ends it was in 2007 i had a vision many things happened in that vision but that was when the Lord revealed to me his wealth agenda for the church. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I mean, people like Ejimi are really the ones anointed with the mantle and the grace for wealth. I'm just somebody who knows God and understands the counsel of God. Like Paul, I have met these spirits. I know they are real. So when I talk, I don't talk because I read a book. No, I've seen it. You see, there are things that when you see, you don't fear again. What, what are you going to be afraid of? The pride of men? Men that are like vapor? From that day, something happened to me. And I will give you the keys of David. He says, and you shall open a door that no man can shut. And shut a door that no man can open. You see, let me tell you. It is part of the burden of the apostolic ministry that God mandates you to laboriously go through that pain, but it's not for yourself. It is for the sake, please be sensitive, listen. There is a grace 
from that encounter when I got that thing I knew case close not for me not for the ministry these horns will never lift up themselves their heads again my brothers and my sisters in any case you must give your soul to someone bow to me otherwise you will enter the fiery furnace do you now see why christians are the ones suffering more aside from our pride and our refusal the devil particularly made sure that he takes our case personal the moment you are making an altar call they are watching you from the realm of the spirit you come out and say lord take my heart take my life lord i know i come from a family of 70 people and nobody ever handed their lives to you but lord let me be the first i give you everything and when you are in your room praying alone shakatabata, lord i will change i will rewrite the history of my family that thermometer is rising in the spirit and is being watched you think you are alone but there are witnesses and a day will come when you will just say lord i vow to you that no matter what you give me you will be lord over it the devil will say no come quickly meet this guy this kind of commitment is the same thing as selling your soul to the devil <laughs> You are the mighty God. Hey, I told me you. You are the glory. I like my right. Hey, you are the mighty God. Hey, I told me you. You are the glory. I like my right. Listen. Listen to me. Please listen. Every time you pass through faces and realms in the spirit, you are given three things. One, you are given keys, a symbol of access. Two, you are given an anointing to bring men into that experience. Three, you are given an enlarged audience in the spirit. God will cause men to hear what you are saying. These are the blessings of sacrifice and the furnace of affliction in the spirit. Don't just see people getting blessed and think they were lucky or that they are just business people who understand business. It's more than that, my brothers and my sisters. Some of the people you see are forged from the furnace of affliction. I have seen spirits and I have met with devils. I know. We are not financially dull, but we know that there is a warfare dimension fighting for the soul of men we are able to focus today and teach the truth of god's word and not coerce any man under the sun to give because god has been faithful and he continues to be faithful there are keys that you hold that you will never fear their fears you will never call what they call conspiracy conspiracy we are not talking of this money mongering thing this appetite and loss for wealth that can make men kill for money please don't mistake in what i'm teaching that's not what i'm teaching i'm teaching a battle for your soul that satan is using money to fight your soul he used your past it did not work he used your bloodline it did not work now he's coming by himself to fight A woman, because of hunger, said, take my children as collateral. That's what Satan wants. The wife of a prophet, even in a man of God's house, there can be hunger. Even in a prophet's house, there can be hunger. I came tonight to blow a trumpet in Zion. 
and to sound the alarm upon a mountain when I saw this in the visions of the Lord I knew that if I don't teach this there is trouble brothers and sisters hear what I say I saw hunger coming I saw it I'm not a false prophet I'm not a prophet of doom I'm not one person who will come out every time and tell you God said God did this no but I saw hunger manipulated by the gates of hell it has nothing to do with economy or political party this is Satan and the hunger continues to bring annoyance listen that hunger Satan is bringing that hunger to scandalize a lot of men of God that hunger will attempt to scandalize many ministries because people will begin to rise up to say let's probe the account of this church let's probe the account of this man of God and in it many people will be found wanting and this is why the Lord is teaching this so that there can be a system of escape because many of us are already following that route because of hunger you don't know the difference between your account and your fellowship account you can fetch from anyone and say God forgive me when I grow I'll, I'll manage it this is what the devil is planning and he will continue to make you in lack so that you implicate yourself and one day when you are well implicated he will boomerang you that's the mistake that many people have made today and it will take the grace and the mercy of God you see these things I speak I speak in parables hunger will make many people dip their hands in a pot that is meant for God Hophni and Phinehas they were just supposed to use the pruning fork to pick something out for themselves but hunger made them to select the portions and brought ruin and destruction to their lives go up the mountain and bring wood is money not made out of wood is paper not made out of wood he tells you the location you must go up the mountain I will take another there will be a part two of this but there is a warfare dimension and I want you to pray my brothers and my sisters listen to me there are gatekeepers the king of Tyre himself is seated there by the time your father tried to get there and this thing struck them down but now you have come we have no time like the three Hebrew boys oh king we will not bow I will be blessed yet my soul will also prosper I will not trade my integrity as a Christian for money lift your voice and pray I like it to blast in tongues the kings of the earth who have benefited from their harlotry with her shall wail and say alas Babylon that great city in one hour is your destruction come hallelujah listen listen to me hallelujah listen it is never about lack of job it is never about lack of house rent money it is never about your business crashing or your business failing it is never about lack of customers you are in a warfare that you are not aware of it's a fight not for your money for your soul 
Satan, how can hold on, please? How can Satan be fighting for money? That's nonsense. He's only using money to fight for your soul. My brothers and my sisters, what shall it profit a man? I say it again. There are many people about losing their soul because of business, losing their soul because of money, losing their soul. Listen, I like you to pray and say, Lord, as for me, my allegiance for you and with you is in life and in death. Lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. We are praying. Say in the name of Jesus. Oh God. You are my El Shaddai. I decree. And I declare. That what you cannot give me. I will never receive it from anyone. Anywhere you do not take me. May I not go. Whatever you do not give me may i never get it lord i declare that the dimensions of wealth and prosperity needed for my life and your house pass it through me lift your voice and pray may i become your treasurer a steward of your resources Pass it through me, O oh God. Pass it through me, O oh God. May I be a steward, trusted with the resources of heaven. Trusted with the resources of heaven. Trusted. Makatoske brakatoshekatelekata. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I declare that my children and all those who will come from me, all those connected from, to me, because of my life, they will never beg for bread. Lift your voice and pray. I will be that Savior in the name of Jesus. I will be that savior in the name of Jesus. I will be that savior in the name of Jesus. My children will never beg for bread. Hallelujah. 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 I like us to pray. And while we're praying, I'm going to give our sisters an instruction. Lay your hands on your womb. And while you are praying, tell yourself, you, I cut off my children from poverty forever. Whether you have a child or not, everyone lift your voice and pray. I cut off my children from the lineage of poverty, the lineage of hardship, 
I will not give birth to children who will be beggars. I will not give birth to children who will self center because of the need for resources. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please give us Psalm 112. Quickly, please. Psalm 112. We're rounding up. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. It starts with the fear of God. It doesn't start with a business idea. It starts with the fear of the Lord. That delighted greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation until both your seed and generation we are not talking of food to eat. Listen, listen, listen. Let me tell you this. The body of Christ is full of selfish people who just have enough to eat. They have enough to take a flight. They have enough to pay their rent and so they think it is okay. You are a selfish person. Do not make the mistake of Esther to forget that you are also part of the Jews. When her man wanted to destroy the Jews, Esther said, I'm comfortable. And Mordecai said, do not think that when they finish with us, you will be free. There are families and there are individuals that are not begging for bread. So when they hear this kind of teaching, they say it's a waste of time. It's a wicked thing as a man of God. Listen, I'm preaching from my heart. There are some of you who have come here now with envelopes, with seats inside, waiting to bless me as a man of God. And I appreciate it. And it will be wicked if you are blessing me as a man of God and I don't empower you to prosper. How do you get the resources? Are you thieves? I'm able to preach and I'm able to spend time with God because my needs are met. My family is taken care of and then I can focus to serve the Lord and bless you. If the devil uses economic empowerment to scatter those things, my time will be spent on intercession for money rather than I will now leave the ministry of the word and start doing the matter of tables. I will never be the man of God who will raise men who are spiritually powerful and then economically down. No. When you start a move like this, you are usually misunderstood until you see the excellency of a balanced spiritual life and the convenience that it provides for you and your family. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Next verse. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. And yet his righteousness, his soul will still prosper. That you can be a billionaire and yet your heart is completely not in those resources. You sit down and hear that a ministry wants to build and without coercion you write a check of a billion naira and say please all these night vigils of praying bombing heaven there are souls to be saved there are teachings there are this there are nations to disciple let me tell you one of the worst distractions that can happen to the body is when they focus on talking about money money every time every service money is a cause and it's a distraction every service cannot be money now you see even evangelistic meetings after raising um, winning souls as soon as the souls are busy writing their names 
they start raising offering i don't blame the men of god i'm not insulting them but i'm saying that's not the way it's to be done this is what gives license to men in the world to continue to abuse and harass any man of god anywhere but my brothers and sisters there are people that will do it right now empowered by the spirit that the level and the extent of the blessing of God upon your life will dumbfound principalities and powers yet your heart will never be lifted up your heart is still contrite because you have pledged your allegiance to Christ and Christ alone last prayer point for tonight the controlling powers manipulating my financial resources I come against you in the name of Jesus lift your voice and pray the controlling powers ensuring that I fail in business the controlling powers ensuring that everything I do fails pray the controlling powers that ensure that every good thing becomes negative in my life I come against you by the God of heaven Hallelujah. Listen. The next time I will, it continues, we have to stop. What you have heard tonight is only one side of the coin. You must hear the other side. You run like this with this one side alone. You are running on one leg. As powerful as what I've shared is. This is a ministry of balance. I will show you the other side where many of us fail. But then it is sufficient for you to know tonight that the fight for wealth is not a fight for your pocket. It's a fight for your soul. Poverty has nothing to do with hunger. It is only a strategy to get your soul eventually. So prosperity also is not really about your pocket. It is also about a system of preservation of your soul. Are we together? I testify, I testify that your goodness is real. I testify that your goodness is real. My testimony, your goodness is real. I testify your goodness is real. I testify Your goodness is real Now listen everyone I'm going to make a very special altar call tonight You will think That because you are teaching on the subject of economy There is no bearing in it to the souls of men the closest teaching to the souls of men is the issue of economy not even rapture what shall it profit a man whether in overflow one two three online if you gain the whole world don't tell me apostle i'm working in an oil company i'm doing very well i have businesses and investments i'm i'm i'm, I'm an astute businessman all that is nonsense if your soul went for it we clap for people in the kingdom not when they make money but when they make money and their soul is still intact we don't clap for you just because of the ideas and the witty inventions we are concerned first and foremost about the health of your soul and there are people here listening to me tonight some of you have been plagued personally and then territorially financially and because of that it has it has affected your spiritual life in a serious way for some you have never made a genuine decision for jesus but you are a hustler you can get up in the morning and sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow but tonight he wants to give you rest listen to me carefully and then there is a second group of people you really used to love the lord until the issues and the matters of finances hit you 
and you found out that the, the quest for money is almost like an addiction that you need to break. And right now, you're so, you can't remember the last time you opened your Bible. The only message you listen to is anything that has money and, and, and dollars and pounds in it. The moment any conversation has to do with God and your soul, you don't care. Any business is doable. You can get off from here and go to Cameroon tomorrow because they said there is a business there. That kind of life is the cause of Cain. Is the mystery of a wanderer spirit where a man continues to move from pillar to post. But the Bible says to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise. It says redeeming the time for the days are evil. I'm going to give these two people an opportunity. Our time is gone. Please, I want you to run if you need to. Please clear the way for them. Overflow one and two. Overflow three, you can move to the front of your projector screen. You are giving your life to Christ or you are saying, Lord, I'm tired of this. My spiritual life cannot die because of money. Make your way to the front quickly. And while, don't stand watching who is coming out. This is, this is, this is a call. This is between you and God. What shall it profit a man? Hear me. If you lose, you gain the whole world and lose your soul. You can gain the world and gain your soul. You can gain financial resources and gain your soul. Are you coming? God bless you. The Holy Spirit is speaking to certain people. Please, you may stand because of space. Apostle, I've never really given my life to the Lord. You are welcome. Apostle, I found myself as a hustler. It's not my fault. I'm trying to make ends meet. I know my brother and my sister. I understand there's no condemnation in this place I may be harsh in communicating but it's with the heart of love I want to save you from the rat race there is a way God lifts men hustling is not the way it happens someone still needs to come here the Lord is showing me a gentle man don't be embarrassed you can come and join them this thing they talk about that you send text messages to people in the name of this and that abroad claiming to be this those those yahoo boys those things there are two people here you came for koinonia you are involved in this thing god is saying you should come out because i see police arresting you i'm not threatening you i'm just telling you what the lord is showing me not you will not be able to go scot-free with everybody you may manipulate people's bank account and be withdrawing money but one day 99 days is not very far let me assure you 99 days is not very far the day the lord of the harvest will demand your soul the rich fool was not a fool because he was rich he was a fool because of what he did with the money my soul find rest that was his foolishness a soul of a man can never find rest in money oh my soul wait thou upon the lord the soul of men only find rest in god there is no gold there is no money there is no investment there is no job that can give the soul of a man rest that's why millionaires hang themselves and die they write letters and commit suicide because only God can give the soul of a man rest. But that is not a license to be poor. Many people would like what I've preached now because they don't, they are frustrated about getting wealthy. So every time you hear people challenge rich people, you are happy. You must detest poverty. But at the same time, you must detest trading your soul for anything. Some of you are crying here. Don't be embarrassed. We are not here to judge anybody. God is giving us a new beginning. Listen, young people, let me tell you this. Hear me. Run away from people who try to tell you hustling is the way forward. They may be sincere, but I can tell you this. Most of the people who are millionaires in this ministry are people who God raised from scratch. They are not people who inherited jack from anybody. 
the finger of God and the wisdom, the systems that you are now being taught. You can be a millionaire in the spirit and a millionaire financially and that in both God be glorified and not be afraid of wealth. People are afraid because they are not sure where it came from. When God blesses you, he secures what he blesses and there is no need to be afraid of what man can do. He said, I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that set themselves against me round about. He said, for thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. You are my glory. You are the lifter of my head. Those of you here and those following online, probably someone is watching and listening online from whatever nation of the world. And the Lord is calling you to say, come to me all ye that are weary and heavy laden he wants to give you rest say after me lord jesus mean it from the depth of your heart say lord jesus i come to you tonight just as i am i declare that i am unable to help myself i ask you lord jesus to step into my life I receive your life and I declare that from tonight you are my Savior you are my Lord you are my King you are my El Shaddai I declare that my soul will never be given in exchange for wealth prosperity or anything in this life I declare that from today and forever I am yours say it again that from today and forever I am yours therefore I declare that I'm born again I'm a child of God I receive the newness of life amen I salute every one of you for making this most noble decision some of you are handing your lives to Jesus for the first time. Some of you are rededicating your lives. doesn't matter what category. Let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, this is a decision that you will live to remember because it will not only translate you, it will translate your children and your children's children. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. May I request, please, all of you in concert that you follow. There's a gentleman. Please wave your hands and let them see you. There's a gentleman waving his hands and i would request that you follow him all of you in concert there will be a group of people to quickly and very briefly receive you let's celebrate them as they go dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaskade bashkana kata branda kate katos. Kate branda kata pakotos koto pray kate kene kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline. 